Good evening. Welcome to all of you who have joined us in person via Zoom and via Facebook Live. For those of you who are here in person, please take this moment to ensure that your cell phone is turned off. Thank you very much. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still. If you want to close your eyes, please feel free to. I like to sit up straight with my feet on the floor. And if you'd like to, please chant to yourself, God's the love that I am. You may also choose to chant anything else you'd like to yourself or just sit in quiet. If your mind wanders, which it will, please bring it back to the mantra, God is the love that I am.
And so, as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back to your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Join me in prayer as, recognize, as I recognize the one power everywhere present, all-knowing. And as I know it, I sense it, I feel it, that God is in this place. And God is love. And God is the good of which there is no opposite. There is nothing equal. God is the bomb. <laughs> And I know that there is nothing that can separate me from my creator. I am an emanation of the divine. I know this for myself, and I know this for each and every one of you. We have all the qualities of God. We are love. We are abundant. We are kind. We are good. And I speak my word for this evening's service, absolutely knowing it is divinely guided. It is blessed. Each one of us is blessed that is in the sanctuary. Each one of us is blessed that is out in Zoom land and in, by our Facebook. And as we come together, we absolutely know that Reverend Sydney is a divine expression of God. She channels God's word. And we hear exactly what we need to hear. We learn exactly what we need to learn. And we absolutely do everything with love and laughter in our hearts. And we are so blessed by our lovely lighting and sound person, Adam. We are blessed by our talented Karen and Sam musical. And we are blessed by every single person that puts on this lovely service tonight. And I am so grateful. I am grateful to be here. I'm grateful to know that God is in this room. And with a grateful heart, I release my word into the law of mind. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily food, and grant us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Until we're through 
We say we're over it, but it shows in the things we do. It eats us up inside till there's a hole a mile wide, filled with anger and fear. But now I know when I. When I am free to release the pain of the past, it's for me. It's for you. It's forever. We are blessed when we find forgiveness. I judge you. You judge me. We judge our lives away. We think we're justified, and it shows in the things we say. It eats us up inside till there's a hole a mile wide, filled with hunger and guilt. But now I know when I forgive for good. That's when I am free to release the pain of the past. It's for me. It's for you. It's forever. We are blessed when we find forgiveness. I could have held you tight, but I had to be right. I just had to be right. So now I know when I forgive for good. That's when I am free. To release the pain of the past, it's for me, it's for you, it's forever. We are blessed when we find forgiveness. When we find forgiveness. Thank you. And I'm so glad you got the memo about tonight's wardrobe. I did. I, I really did. Am, <laughs> I'm We're very twins. <laughs> it's awesome. Except your pants look a lot more comfortable than mine. They're pretty comfy. Okay. We'll talk. Oh, that's right. We have people here, don't we? <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Um, I am here to make you uncomfortable. Because we're going to talk about... Forgiveness, because prosperity requires forgiveness. I'm so sorry, I don't make up the rules. <laughs> I don't even enforce them. You know, that, that would be a fun job to have, but I just, I'm here to share my story and hopefully in a way that will touch you and, um, and you'll teach me because, you know, we're all each other's teachers and so that's, that's part of the gift, that's part of the fun here. So the title of my talk is Prosperity Requires Forgiveness. Now let's define a couple of terms. First of all, prosperity. It's not just about the money, okay? We want to go to that place because we, are, we live in Western society and that's kind of our go-to is, is um, wealth, it's abundance, it's prosperity as in money because we think that that is where we get our good. 
prosperity really means the full, complete freedom to be who you are, to be who you are, to be what you are, to live the life you want, to have that flow of life, of energy, of joy, of love, of passion, of creativity. That is all part of the definition and the, the, mm, the fullness of life. That's prosperity, is fullness of life. So if we can move into that greater understanding, yes, it does include money, absolutely, because money is the exchange, right? We have to have something to exchange. We don't barter anymore, and I'm not going to give you sheep for your corn. Um, I don't have sheep, and your corn's probably lovely, but I think I'm going to buy it from Ralph's, okay, because that's, it's on the way home. So, I, you know, we, this is what we do. We, and we have to have a means of exchange. Now, if we understand that prosperity is an extension of the energy that animates us, that, that lives through us, then it makes it a little bit easier to understand the role of, of money in our lives, right? The, the role of prosperity, because it all matters. And what I know is that we are here to master materiality, not to be mastered by it but to master materiality. So yes, we are spiritual beings, and we are in this spiritual universe that is governed by spiritual laws, and we are here in a material universe, a material world, in which there are other humans. And there will be times when we brush up against them. We will brush up against their ideas and their values and what they believe, and that might bring about the invitation to practice forgiveness. So what is forgiveness? I think that we have a very user-unfriendly understanding about what it is and how to use it, how to really forgive people. Um, And what I want to suggest, and I, I read this quote earlier, forgiveness doesn't change the past. Instead, it enlarges the future. Whoa, that's so much easier, right? It doesn't change the past. I would love to change the past. Wouldn't that be great if I had that ability, that time machine? But I can absolutely change my story about the past and thereby enlarge my future. So a lot of what I was working on today, um, you know, I, I, the way I work with a talk is I... I generally pick my topics about a month or two in advance. And so I have them and I have a bit of a description and I will refer to that. And, but I also have the freedom. I give myself the, um, the freedom to, as Dr. Mark would say, don't ever let a title, um, change the direction of a talk. Don't, (laughs) don't be, don't be strapped to that. You know, if you come up with a better talk than the title, then that's fine go to a different talk. (laughs) So, but this one actually, as I sat and worked with it, so this is what I do. I will work with this and I will just sort of mull it over for the weeks leading up to when I'm going to speak. And then I download and sometimes it's the day before and sometimes it's the day of, and today it was the day of. And so I was working a lot with this book by Edwin Gaines, which I think a lot of you know, the four spiritual laws of prosperity. Now, Edwin is really wonderful. I've known her for a lot of years. I knew about her before I ever met her. And when I finally did meet her, she did not disappoint because she is this wonderfully, oh my gosh, larger than life person. I mean, she's five foot nothing, but there is just so much that radiates from her that is so powerful, so wonderful, so loving, and so down to earth. And so she... As, as I was reading her book and listening to some of her stuff today, I had, to, I had to write down one thing that she said. Every time that you and I hold on to the least little bit of irritation, blame, judgment, condemnation, ridicule, or sarcasm against another human being, we are building a wall. It's a big, thick, concrete brick wall that surrounds us so that, now hear me on this, so that the good we desire cannot get in. It cannot get in. And every time, though, that we forgive the least little thing, we open a way for more good to come into our lives. 
So, ah, just breathe, because as you are hearing this, I, you're going to have the chance. I'm hoping that you will allow yourself to just look at some of the walls that you might have built around yourself. Just over the last years, however, or maybe since childhood, there might be areas in which you think of someone or something and you go, Ugh. that <laughs> struck a chord, did I? And, <laughs> and that's an area that you have the invitation now to look at and you're going to have some tools to do that. So unforgiveness blocks your good. Unforgiveness blocks your good. Not only that, it's not just a block about blocking your good in the form of money. It blocks your health and your healing. It blocks your full participation in life and your energy. It blocks your... Mm, it blocks your ability to connect with other people and to really love fully and richly and deeply. Unforgiveness is a wall. And it is a non-discriminating wall. It doesn't care if stuff is trying to get in or stuff is going to get out because it's something that the ego does to protect us because we seem to think that, that we have to be protected. And that's what the ego wants to do is protect us. But it doesn't just protect us from the hurt or the pain. It keeps us, protects us from the joy that we want to express or the joy that we want to live, the power that we want to engage with, right? It just, it tamps down all of it. And I'm going to suggest that that's not the way any of us want to live. I know it's not the way I want to live. I don't want to live numbed. I don't want to live with the governor on, you know, listen. So when I was a kid, my brother, who was four years older, had a mini bike. Anybody remember mini bikes <laughs> from the late 60s, early 70s? And all of the kids that he hung out with, they used to take the governor off. I don't even know what a governor is, but they would take that thing off so it would go faster and be louder, okay? And it always was much more fun that way. So we, we want to take the governor off, right? We want to take those limits off of us. So if unforgiveness is what blocks your good, here's another one to take in. Financial debt is about unforgiveness. Financial debt is about unforgiveness. Forgiveness. Now, understand I'm not talking about the wise use of credit, as Charles Fillmore used to call it. I'm not talking about the debt that serves you, like your home, your car, college tuition, business loans, that kind of thing. Those are things that, in, that you invest in, and they serve you because you have invested in yourself. But the debt that just keeps haunting you and following you, like that credit card debt that just won't go away, the... Um, the things that just seem to stay there, what is that debt about? It's about unforgiveness. Now, whether or not this is resonating with you, just try it on. Just consider that maybe this is so. You can leave it at the door when you go tonight, but you can also take it with you. And if it seems to work, excellent. If it doesn't, then you've lost nothing except some time here with other people who love you and support you, and it got you away from, from YouTube. So this is a good thing. So if I haven't made you uncomfortable yet, um, here's another chance. Let me do that now. Um, debt is a socially acceptable way to punish yourself. Debt is a socially acceptable way to punish yourself. Now, a lot of this is from what Edwin Gaines has had to say. And I just, I, I, I mean, like I said, I've known her for probably 20 years. And that one just sort of knocked me over because I don't ever remember hearing her say that. But there it was. When you no longer have a need to punish yourself, you'll, your debt will no longer have a role to play in your life. It'll begin to dissolve. When you no longer have a need to punish wait for it, anyone else, <laughs> your debt will begin to dissolve. Again, I don't make the rules, <laughs> okay? So how do we actually forgive? How do we do this? How do we get past and truly no longer invest in bitterness, in judgment, and the digging in, right, that comes from 
having a strong dedication to being right, as she was saying in the song about being right. I just had to be right. I had to be right. How do we get away from that commitment to being right and make it smaller than our dedication to being happy? We also have that dedication. If we know we're right, then that other person, they've got to be wrong, right? Because that's how this has to work. There's, there's black and there's white. Apparently there's no, nothing else because that's the way we like to think and that's the way our ego would like us to think. So the way we get away from it, out of that, I have a couple of suggestions. Um, and again, Ed Wayne, thank you so much for being such a goddess on this. And this one is right out of the wisdom that was offered to the disciples by the teacher Jesus. Um, they came to him and they said, how do we forgive someone? What do we, why do we have to forgive someone? And how many times do we have to do this so we're finally not having to deal with this nonsense anymore? You know, we want to be free. We want to, we want to free them. And if we forgive them like seven times, Jesus, is that enough? Jesus went, ha, 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 ha. Actually, I don't know what he did. But I like to say, hear him or, or picture him saying, oh, and by the way, the visual I get for, for Jesus is, um, oh, and I, I just lost his name, um, the guy who was in Aquaman. Oh, Jason Momoa. That's the guy. Jason Momoa is the best Jesus ever. Don't you think? You know, if we're going to have a good-looking, hunky Jesus, I mean, I'll, I'll pray to that. Anyway, but I digress. But Jesus said 70 times 7. Jason Momoa said 70 times 7. Now, hopefully you know me well enough by now to know that I don't do literal Bible. I really don't. But in this case, I think that Jesus was on to something, and he was teaching something very wise and psychologically sound. Because we are resistant beings. We don't want people to tell us what to do. We want to keep that wall up. And I, listen, I am an expert at resisting things that are for my better good, my higher good, especially if somebody else, like my husband told me to do it, right? I just, don't you dare. Because there's, there's just like this pouty child part of me that wants to just stomp her foot and say, you can't make me. Anybody else have that part, right? <sighs> And here's a good one. My husband's father used to say to him when he got tired of hearing his son, Charlie, my husband, yelling, you can't make me. And Charlie's dad would say, I know I can't make you do this, but I can make you wish you had. <laughs> and I think that's the way forgiveness is, right? And it's our resistance to doing what we know is going to work for us. It's going to make us wish that we had, and a lot sooner. I can think of times when I held on to my assessments of who's right and who's wrong. No, I'm right and you're wrong. That's the correct way. And if I had just let it go, the walls around me would have come tumbling down. Anybody hold on to stuff? Okay, social media loves this one. We were on a break. Anybody recognize that? <laughs> Those of you who've ever watched Friends, you know she just could not let it go. All right. 70 times 7. Now, Edwin Gaines talks about this, and she said she decided to do it really literally. She went and got a journal and a pen, and she wrote, I, Edwin, forgive what's-his-name completely. 35 times in the morning, 35 times at night for seven days. Now, you can't do this with copy and paste on your computer. You need to actually write it. Yeah, your hand may cramp. 35 times and 35 times times seven days. She says that things started to shift and loosen up for her. So the next week, she did it for herself. I, Edwin, forgive myself completely. She wrote it 35 times in the morning. She wrote it 35 times in the evening for seven days. Her life began to flourish, unbelievably so. So the following week, she did it for her father, who had emotionally and physically abused her from the time she was four months old until she was past the age of four years old. Then she spent seven days 
in the morning and in the evening, doing it for her mother and then for her brother and then past partners and relationships. She did this for weeks and weeks. And she reports that she started to prosper in ways that were unimaginable to her before this. In fact, she said that when she got done with this process, she had no debt. All of the debt that an ex-husband had left her, like $60,000 worth, had dissolved. She was able to go write a check for her new car, her Lincoln. I mean, everything was, and she also, still to this day, she travels first class. She makes a lot of money, she gives a lot of money, and she is in this constant state of forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. So I know that I want to experience that broader idea of prosperity that's not just about money, but it's that high level of wholeness, freedom, and the flow of life in every area, right? That is, to me, that's what life is about. I don't want to go through life numbed or like this is a rehearsal or saying to myself, well, I hope it gets better tomorrow because that to me is not living a full life. So I'm talking health, relationships, creativity, career, guidance, inspiration, energy, all of it. I want to live out loud. In fact, some of you know that Centers for Spiritual Living, which is the parent organization that we are a part of, every year they have an annual theme and ministers from, and practitioners from across the world work with them to create um, outlines and talk titles and, and lots of substance and we populate a whole bunch of stuff so that ministers, particularly new ministers, have material to work with. I've done it for the last two years. I didn't do it this year um, as I've gotten so busy, but it's been a really, really powerful experience to work with other ministers visioning and planning. And so for 2023, the theme is so wonderful, living out loud, living out loud. And so I, I'm excited about this idea. I mean, I know it's a phrase that we've heard for a long time, but the idea that, that now an organization is formally going to be building some, um, some material around that is really awesome. So now forgiving someone is powerful. If, and if you choose to commit to it, not only are you going to reveal stuff that's ripe and ready for transformation, but your sense of availability to God, to life, is going to expand and change everything for the better. So one of the teachers I really like um, who, oh my gosh, she was on the planet at the turn, of the, the turn of the last century, in the 1900s, and her name was Emily Cady, and she wrote a little book called Lessons in Truth. In that book, she wrote these words. Forgiveness means to give some actual, definite good in return or exchange for, quote, evil done to you. It is a giving for. Forgiveness is to give for. Give love for that hurt. Give compassion for that pain. Give joy for that fear, whatever that exchange is. And here's the whole passage. We must forgive as we would be forgiven. To forgive does not simply mean to arrive at a place of indifference to those who do personal injury to us. It means far more than this. To forgive is to give for, to give some actual definite good in return for evil given. One may say, I have no one to forgive. I have not a personal enemy in the world. And yet, if under any circumstances, any kind of a served him right thought springs up within you over anything that any of God's children may do or suffer, you have not yet learned how to forgive. I was busted when I read that. And I've actually been working with that phrase for many years many years, like about 30 years, that idea of giving for, because forgive always felt a little, I, I just couldn't cry, cry, quite give myself a context for it or, or an understanding. That's the one that did it. Spiritual truth is powerful stuff, right? And often you'll know it's your spiritual truth if you find yourself stirred up. When we resonate with something, it doesn't always feel like unicorns and pink fairy dust. Sometimes it feels like an interruption. And last week, some of you might remember, I talked about the idea of interrupting our routine lateral thinking. And I mentioned a book titled A Whack on the Side of the Head. And that's what 
the call to forgiveness can feel like sometimes. It can feel like that. And especially if it's something in your life that you can't seem to heal, you can't resolve, you haven't been able to get past or recover from. And I want you to remember what I said earlier. Unforgiveness functions like a big, thick, sturdy brick wall that we ourselves have built around us. In other words, if forgiveness doesn't get out, life can't get in. Yeah. And again from Emily Cady, the very pain that you suffer, the very failure to demonstrate over some matter that touches your own life deeply may rest upon just this spirit of unforgiveness that you harbor toward the world in general. Put it away with resolution. So hardness in any area of our thinking or of our heart serves as a barrier. And like I said earlier, it's an indiscriminate barrier. It doesn't care if it's keeping, uh, keeping us protected from, from the pain, the perceived pain out here or keeping us protected from giving love out here. It's just a wall. I know that life requires a yes. And if we're going to say yes, it means also a dismantling of the wall. You know, when we partner with spirit, when we partner with the divine or the God of our understanding, it means that not only are we, we being equal partners with God, but that God is an equal partner with us. God's an equal partner with you. So to the degree that you and I commit and do our work to free ourselves from our own walls, our own personal constraints, our own judgments, our hatreds, our limitations, our bitterness, our mm, that, that's, that's how God shows up with just as much commitment, right? But if our commitment is, well, meh, then that's the way God corresponds to us, right? Dismantling that wall around our hearts and our egocentric protections will be so much easier if, you will, if you'll approach your walls by asking a few questions. What is the story I am telling myself about the person or the event that's keeping me in pain? And particularly, Go back to when maybe the, the, the physical issue started in your life or the financial debt began to make itself known to you or it started building up. Ask yourself, what was going on in your life at that time? Who or what is still in need of forgiveness? So once you get that story, is it possible to create a different story? Are you willing to create and tell a different story? You know, years ago, I had this experience where I was on the road doing a show, and I was not happy doing the show. I was miserable. My ego had me so locked into this because I was able to tell people, well, I'm out doing this, and I'm making lots of money, and blah, 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 and we're traveling here, we're traveling there, and I'm working with all these famous people, and on and on and on. And um, I, it was not a good experience. It was, in so many ways, it was wrong. And at one point, in a misguided sense of inspiration, which now I look at and I go, thank God for that, um, my back hurt, and one of the dancers said, oh, I can adjust that for you. Note to self, if a dancer, not a chiropractor, ever tells you that they can adjust you, walk away limp away, crawl away, all of the above I should have done, I didn't, and it fractured a rib. Fun, right? I couldn't breathe. I couldn't play keyboard anymore. I couldn't do anything. So I, I went home to recover, and while I was home, I was terminated from the job. So now I had a big, great story to tell. I had bad guys. I had good guys. I had enemies. I had plot twists. I had all of this great drama, and through it all, I was the victim <laughs> and the heroine. I was the hero of this. They did me so wrong. They did me so wrong. And I'd been home about three days just festering in this story and telling it to any of my friends who would listen. And one of my girlfriends, and I hope you all have a friend like this someday. I really, really hope. And if you don't come to me, I will be that person for you. She looked at me. She said, Oh my God, Sydney, you are so powerful. You quit and got them to do it for you. 
oh my, it changed my story. Otherwise, years later, I'd still be in the story. I know I would, because I am that way. It was such a shift for me. And I have to say that just a minute ago, as I was sitting there meditating while Karen was singing, I asked myself the question, am I willing to use that as an affirmation? I'm so powerful, I quit and got them to do it for me. And two other circumstances in my life popped up in which I've been holding them outside my heart. Two different people, two different things, years apart. And I started laughing because I thought, oh my God, I am that powerful. I quit and got them to do it for me. Yeah, I could have had a V8, but no, I've been holding them wrong all this time. I want to suggest to you that if you are willing, if you are willing to be healed, to be transformed at depth, forgive. Find a, go after what needs forgiving like, like you're on a hunt. Do it with a passion, with an obsession, so that you can begin to forgive all of it, all of them. And if you have ever been fired and you still have just a sense of this was wrong, I dare you to say to yourself, and you got to do it with some attitude, I'm so powerful, I quit and got them to do it for me. Amen. Thank God. Would you be willing to consider doing that? I have to tell you how it frees you. I just literally sat there laughing. I thought, oh my, I've been holding this stuff against two different people for a long time. How stupid is that? How silly? What a waste of energy. And it's not that I'm like obsessing and waking up at three in the morning about it, but those little areas, those little blocks <sighs> keep me from experiencing life fully, right? Those little blocks are the things that have blocked my full availability to God. You know, it's like you can, you go along, everything's fine, everything's fine. Oh, look at a little road bump there. Okay, those little road bumps. Instead of going over them, for, for me, they, I mean, I would go over them instead of like stopping and saying, oh, heal that. But I still had this little sense of thinking, God, you know, that really sucked. <laughs> they really sucked. And now I'm going, oh my God, I'm so glad that happened. Because now I have this great story to tell you. So, and I know there's more under it. There's a lot more for me to unpack on that. Oh, where was I? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so Dr. Mark's going to be offering a four-week abundance workshop in August. I hope that you will consider doing it. It's for a love offering. It's going to be on Zoom. And if you don't have access to Zoom, pair up with a friend and have a watch party. Wear your mask, of course. Um, but in preparation, I want to touch on an idea, too. First of all, we live in a universe of law and order. There are definite laws that apply to every activity in life. These will work for us or against us, depending on how we use them. And these laws are impersonal. I'm talking spiritual law, gravity, anything like that, right? Electricity. These are just laws that we work with or not. The laws don't care how we use them. We get to choose to be in alignment with them or not. One of the laws is the law of circulation or the law of giving and receiving. All of life is in continual circulation. Breathing in, breathing out, sun up, sun down, seasons, tides, birth, death. Life is circulation. And this whole idea of giving and receiving is fascinating because most of us are out of balance, right? We either know how to receive really well, toddlers and narcissists do this, by the way, or we are living under the illusion that it is so much more blessed to give than to receive. Really? I call BS, belief system. That's a belief system. Let's bust that belief system. You need to be in balance. It's the yin and the yang. We need all of it. Yang, yang, I don't know. It means that we don't, that if we don't give back into life, we interfere with and eventually dam up our own circulatory activity. Giving is the foundation for building and maintaining a prosperity consciousness. And for giving is foundational. Give for that which happened. And as you begin to consider your own prosperity journey tonight and this week, I want to invite you to begin to look at anything 
or anyone you have kept outside your heart or you have a hardness about. So in a moment, we're going to pray, and I hope that you will allow your soul to guide you in noticing where the walls are still present. And whether your biggest need or your ask in your prayers is for money, love, peace of mind, or perhaps harmony in some area of life, or peace in the world, know that it's softening. It's the softening that brings about transformation. The softening. It's not anchoring and stomping your foot and saying, you can't make me. It's the softening where we allow. It's so much easier to shape clay than rock, don't you think? So be willing now to soften and give the definite and clear gift of your heart in return for whomever or whatever might have hurt you or stolen from you. I already know that the entire universe is crazy about you. It's got your back and it is always conspiring to bless it if you will only let it. I hope you will. Let's pray. All right. Thank you. All right. As we enter into this recognition of the allness of God, the allness of good, the allness of order, of peace and harmony, that which has created, sustained multiple galaxies and universes, I know for each of us that we are part of the wisdom that does that. We share in that wisdom. We share in that love. And now we say yes to sharing in the harmony, in the peace, in the balance that comes from recognizing that we choose, we choose to be part of the circulation of God. And in that, we choose to give for that which has happened to give for anything. We give love. We give love to ourselves for that which we have condemned ourselves for. We give peace to ourselves or to anybody else who might be struggling on this journey of life and acting out in ways that appear to hurt us or others. And I invite you to just, as I move into a series of affirmations, I'm going to say them in the first person, and I invite you to take them in as as your word this day from your soul to your soul. I forgive myself completely for creating and or allowing debt. I no longer have a need to punish myself with debt. I no longer hold anyone in my debt. As an act of self-love, I choose to forgive myself and everyone else for everything. I realize that in order to feel forgiven, I must forgive myself and others completely. And while debt may have served me in the past, I no longer need it. I am free. Debt has no power over me and I allow it to be dissolved now. To the degree that I forgive myself and others, to that same degree, I feel forgiven. As I feel forgiven and forgiving, I find a way to handle all, all previous debt with integrity. I begin now to consciously work at cause in my life rather than effect. I choose to live a a debt-free life and I practice forgiveness every day knowing that forgiveness does not change my past but indeed it does enlarge the future. And as I oh, just allow myself to float and marinate in this peace that comes with full forgiveness. I extend it as a loving balm, as a hug beyond these walls, through this community, through this state, through this nation, around our leaders, and through the world, to all peoples everywhere. 
blessing all who have crossed my path, whether in love or not, who've crossed my awareness, whether in love or not, I allow now my energy to be one of forgiveness. I am no longer empowered to be the judge of life. I am no longer assigned to hold that position. I free myself from judging. And I allow the divine within me to simply bless and heal and prosper all individuals everywhere. I bless Ukraine. I bless Russia. I forgive all, 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 starting with myself. And I know that this prayer blesses all. And I know that it blesses this world. It blesses all, all on this planet. And I dare to say, I dare to affirm as we have in our bulletin, I invite you to say with me, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. I release this word into law with a sense of acceptance and pure gratitude, knowing that I have done such work, we have done such amazing work tonight, and it is joyful, it is wonderful, and we are so powerful. We are so powerful, we let God do it for us, because that is our power, that is our presence and our source. So in gratitude, I say, and so it is, and together we say, amen. I release and I let go the spirit from my life and my heart is open wide because I'm only here for God no more oh no more strife with my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit because I'm Now is the time when we accept tithes and love offerings. Your gifts mean a lot to us. They allow us to do so much in this world. So I invite you to hold your offering in your hand and to say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Oh, yeah, baby.
Your turn. Thank you so much. Oh my God, that was wonderful. <laughs> Hello, here are the announcements for tonight. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give number and QR code are on, in your program or on the website, which is nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with the practitioner is available after the service in person or on Zoom. If you want to do it, have prayer with the practitioner and you're here in the sanctuary, just come on up and you'll find a practitioner to pray with. And if you are on Zoom, then you'll be taken care of by the, by the Zoom host. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen next week. And join Reverend Sidney next week as she shares on the topic, the power of right thinking. Ooh, -hoo. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> Stay tuned and find out what she's going to say. Hell in the hallway, wait, hell in the hallway, light at the door, workshop with Reverend Sidney Steen. This Saturday, July 23rd, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., in person only, and the cost is $40. Sign up today on our website for this powerful workshop where you'll learn how to move gracefully, gracefully through change into renewed and abundant life. Please bring a sack lunch. It's going to be great. Grief support. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, will meet this Sunday at 1 p.m. on Zoom, and all are welcome. Abundance Workshop 2022 with Dr. Mark Vieira. First four Mondays in August on Zoom only. Dr. Mark brings over 30 years of experience and wisdom to this amazing workshop where you'll learn how to expand your prosperity consciousness. Class will be from 6.30 to 8 p.m. and will be based on the book Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. Sign up today on our website, and the cost is responsible giving, and this will change your life for the better. I absolutely guarantee it's an amazing workshop. Save the dates. Come walk the labyrinth in our sanctuary Friday, August 19th, and or Saturday, August 20th, and the details are forthcoming on the time. Zoom virtual patio, before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation, every morning, Monday through Saturday, we have a Zoom meditation from 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. So visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Gail for doing that. And we have practitioner holding vigil, Barbara Berg. Thank you so much. You know, she's not just sleeping over here. Well, no, she's not sleeping at all. <laughs> But she is, she is holding the consciousness, consciousness for all of us. Dean Regan, Facebook Live support, Zoom support, Mark Kroll, Ray Regan, Brenda Jordan. And in Sanctuary, our rock and roll star of tech, all things tech, Adam Keshen. Give him some love. And we had Deborah Lockett. Give her some love on the way out. Our media team, Doreen Remo, Nikki Savara, and Blair. Well, Blair is at home, so we'll give him some love later. Karen Mitchell, and, who sang for us. Sam Krieger, you're, aw you're awesome. Thank you, sir. Gail, I'm, seven, I'm Reverend, I'm something. I'm Reverend Sydney. Let's just pray and sing and go home, shall we? All right. So once again, we just affirm and know that we are here as beings of God and that right where we are, God is and all is well. We say yes to love, yes to possibility, yes to dismantling anything which might have stood in our way. And we are grateful. I release this word into law knowing that we go forth and we soar, we fly because that is what we do. God has given us wings and we use them now. And so it is, amen.
Let's all stand and sing Blessed Always just That's one more right. time. Let's go get it. Thank you, Sam.